Hi, my name is Brian and welcome to my video, which will be something new to my channel. For the first time ever, I'm taking you and my largest neodymium magnet on a trip. We are gonna visit a fellow Danish YouTuber. His name is Morten and he would like to know how well servers handle an attack from a magnet. I would really like to know too, so I'm shielding the magnet a little and packing some tools that might come in handy. The magnet is a 6x2 inch neodymium magnet. It is one of the strongest permanent magnets you can buy, so I need to be careful. I will use some tools I have made from scrap wood. Hopefully I will be able to remove the magnet from the surface again and not lose fingers in this experiment. The magnet is also fragile, so it could shatter if it falls directly onto the server. Do not try this at home, if you have a server at home. All right, looks like we are good to go. And through the magic of editing, I'm already there now. It's a little on the heavy side. So after smashing his door, first impressions are always important. I teamed up with Morten in the server room for a short introduction to his channel called My Playhouse. Hi and welcome to My Playhouse. And today I have a visitor from far, far away. Here is Brian. How do you do? Hi, hi Morten. Hi. Hello, Morten. Morten, you have a channel too. What do I, you do? I have a channel too and as you can see I'm way in over my head on servers. And these are Enterprise Edition servers and over here I have my favorite servers and I do a lot of videos on servers and from time to time I do some projects in my playhouse here. I have an entire house that is my playhouse. Yeah, you and take it very literally. The yeah. playhouse is... I go house. here every weekend and play yeah. and it's full of half done projects. That's pretty cool. It's actually larger than my own house so... Thank you, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. We haven't even been upstairs. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, okay, let's go play. Yes. <laughs> we started with having some fun unboxing the magnet. I've also brought some uh, wedges. If the magnet gets caught somewhere, maybe I can squeeze this in yeah, between. This, and this is one magnet. of the big dangers of having this big a magnet on the metal server. Maybe we have to give the Brian the server with him home if the magnet won't leave it. So, <laughs> hopefully only one server. I've also brought a persuasion tool, if the <laughs> as a last resort. Okay, okay. This is not a rubber hammer. It won't break the magnet. But generally, don't hammer a magnet. No, I, I have they don't like it. experience that <laughs> myself. The amount of wrapping material is growing. But here it is. There it is. After a little fight with lifting the magnet away from the metal shielding in the bottom of the box, we were ready to take a look at the servers Morten had prepared. So, these are the three servers we're gonna test today. And Morten, please tell me something about these. Yeah, these are enterprise servers. They are used in companies that run 24-7 server equipment. Um, they're older servers, but they have just been taken out of production. This is a Dell. It has two Xeon processors in it. It's um, the Xeon processor is called X5450. It's a three gigahertz server. This is a HP model, and it's the generation four of the DL380. It has an, another Xeon processor in it, actually two, but an older generation than this one. Over here we have my favorite model, the <laughs> IBM 3650 um, model one. And that has just one CPU in it, and it's the um, same series as this one, but a lower frequency, 2 GHz. Okay. Each of them has hard drives. The Dell over here have one SATA hard drive. The HP over here has four SCSI hard drives. And the IBM over here has, that's actually a newer generation, it's uh, SAS disks. Okay. So, Actually, so three about, different. about H, this is the newest one. I would actually think this one is the okay. newest one. Yeah. This is the oldest, and then this one and that one. Yeah. And the thing about servers, these are built very yeah. robust, almost yeah. fail safe, because they have to run 24 hours a day. 
they are meant to run, run 24 hours a day and they have redundant systems. They have like error correcting RAM, they have like RAID system hard drive. So if one hard drive fails, it will run on the next one. Yeah. It has dual power supplies. We have spared no expense, of course. They have <laughs> dual power supply. And the build is probably the same if you go out and buy a new server tomorrow. Um, the metal case will be the same. Exactly. But um, let's start them up. Because yeah. they are, as you have told me, they are a little more noisy than a home computer. Just a tiny bit. They uh, become even a bit more noisy when you actually turn them on. Oh, okay. They were just on. That was just standby. Standby, yeah. Okay, I can hear it now. With this info, it's time to place your bet. How many of these servers will be able to start up again after I have swept the magnet over them several times at close distance? All of them? Some of them? None of them? Let's start with the oldest one, the HP. During the test, the servers will run a program called Burn-In Test. It is a stress test of the different components inside and should reveal any problems that the server may encounter with a magnet nearby. This is so wrong. This is just so wrong. Here we go. So far nothing. At 9 cm distance, the server seemed fine, so I halved the distance. This increases the magnetic pull force by a lot. We don't have any failures up here because we are running a redundant system. I think he's deliberately trying to crash my servers. No, no he's he's, he's really he's really putting in some effort here. <laughs> I'm getting tired. It's a workout. It sure is. But at least we got a rash. Before my lack of strength was total, we decided to move on to the IBM. I really think that my favorite IBM server has bad odds because look at, look at how close the top hard drives are to the top of the server. Like, ugh. Yep, the HP does have some optical and floppy drives between the top lid and hard drives, adding extra distance and shielding against the magnetic field. Are you ready? We might actually already have an error. Hmm. Okay, we already have a we have a failure up here. Error with reading from drive. Okay, we're gonna see if we can kill the other disc. That's this is Brian's idea. Yep. <laughs> it's not my server. So he's sliding the magnet down the, the wooden board here to get it uh, from nine centimeters to six centimeters. It didn't seem to change anything, and I could sense that Morton thought we should move on to the Dell. So we did, and boy, did we get a reaction from the Dell. Well, not at 9 cm distance, but when I tried to go a little closer, something changed. Sliding the magnet down from 9 cm to 6 cm, with no difficulties whatsoever. is happening. We have been discovered. Uh. Smells oh. really hot. Yeah, we have something burning here. The server sounded really angry and smelled furiously hot. It was giving us errors about fan redundancy and fan RPM. When we opened the server, we found that three of the four fans had stopped working. Not good.
good during a burn-in test. There's no cooling on this one. These three are down. This one is running. <laughs> That's not enough. Yet the servo was still running, so we went closer with the magnet. Four and a half centimeters. And funny enough, the <laughs> it cooled down. Yeah, I think that last frame just gave up the. Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> That's bad. In. No, oh, no, no. Oh! Still alive! Still alive! Come on! <laughs> oh! 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 This gear off! Oh yeah! Something's rotten! So we got it! Oh! Oh, two errors. They will probably. Yeah, it's. It's. There is no light in it anymore. No. We killed it. No reason to carry on. So. Oh! Yeah. oh yeah. And the server black screened. It's probably gonna try and boot. I don't think it's gonna boot with the magnet right there. That's bad, if a server tries to reboot, right? It, it's not good when a server boots on <laughs> its own. With the Dell crashing, it was time to try restarting all three servers. Here's the result. The HP was complaining. I think we have another bad drive over here. I'm not totally sure, but I don't like that sound. But even with two SIG hard drives, the HP managed to start up again due to the redundant RAID 1 system. The IBM also sounded sick. And with hard drives in degraded critical condition, it didn't manage to start up Windows again. The Dell, well, with only one broken hard drive, it just black screened. <clears throat> the smell of burnt plastic is very strong with this one. So there you have it. One of these servers was able to start up again. Let me know in the comments if you guessed right based on the little info I gave you. This may be the end of the video, but not the end of these free servers. Check Morten's channel where he has much more info about these servers and servers in general. He's a genuine and kind guy and he also has a video where he fixes these free servers to get them up and running again. You could also watch another of my videos where I test a TV and desktop computer with the magnet. Or how about a laptop with an SSD? Will it make it? If you have watched all of this long video, you may like it enough to click the thumbs up button and maybe even subscribe to my videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos where I will... Mm, yeah, who knows what I'll do.